Welcome to our channel, listen to my story. Please like, share and subscribe. Hello everyone, I'm Lauren. Did you ever wonder what it would be like to have your life completely destroyed by someone close to you? Ever thought about what you would do then? I didn't have time to think, because that's exactly what happened to me. It all started two years ago. I lived a quiet life with my mom and dad and my sister. I loved my family. We were always together. We were happy until that fateful day. My dad got fired from his work, a big company. He had worked there for 20 years. The only money we had then was what he had managed to save over the years. Finding a new job wasn't easy. It was a hard time for all of us, especially my dad. He was becoming desperate. At times, he just sat there, quietly, deep in thought and I rarely saw him smile since. One late night, we were still up waiting for him. When he walked through the door, when he walked through the door, but something was different. He wasn't walking straight. It was the first time in my life seeing him drunk. I decided to take matters in my own hand. I started job hunting. I was lucky enough to find something suitable at a startup company. The pay was good enough, and the more I worked, the more I earned. I was trying my best to get our life back. I was giving it all I've got. My dad started asking me for money. I was more than happy to give him what he needed. I didn't even ask what it was for. Then he started asking for more. He came late almost every night, and he was never awake in the morning. It seemed like we hadn't talked together for ages. Then, money started disappearing from my purse. I got home from work one night. It had been a long day and I was really tired. I put my bag in my room, and I went to the kitchen to find something to eat. I made myself a sandwich, then took it back to my room, but when I got to the door, I saw a shadow moving inside. I thought everyone was asleep, so I opened the door slightly and looked inside. I couldn't believe what I saw. My dad was standing over my bag, and my wallet was in his hand. He found no money in it, so he threw it on the bed and started going through my purse. At that moment, my mom came down the stairs. She had my dad's shirt in her hands and a small pack of white powder. I looked at her face. Her eyes were filled with tears. I tried to speak but found nothing to say. My dad came out of my room. He saw us standing there. He tore the shirt and the pack from my mom's hands. He was hysterical. He started breaking things around him. Suddenly, everything changed. My mom and I were too scared to move. But then my sister came running down the stairs. He pulled her towards him and held a knife to her throat. He threatened to kill her if we didn't give him money. Without a moment's thought, I did what he asked. Things only got worse. Nothing was ever enough. He asked for more and more money. And if I refused, he'd get violent, beating up anyone in his path. I couldn't stand by and watch. So I would just give him what he wanted until I decided enough was enough. He barged down the stairs one evening and asked for all the money I've got. I told him we had expenses to pay, the rent, school fees, but none of it mattered to him. He asked me again for the money and threatened me if I didn't do what he asked. I refused. He hit me so hard that I crashed my head against the wall and fell to the floor, bleeding. Everything went dark. My mom took me to different hospitals and I had to do a lot of checkups and tests, but all the doctors said the same thing, that this was it. I was sentenced to live my life in darkness, never to see the light again. Bumping my head against the wall was one of the reasons, but apparently my psychological state played a huge role in my recovery. The doctors suggested that I'd be taken to a psychiatrist. My dad felt sorry for what he had done to me. He quit the drugs and alcohol, tried to be proper, but it was because of him that I was in this state. I didn't know if I could ever find it in myself to forgive him. I was torn inside. He was my dad, but I couldn't forget what had happened. I stopped talking shortly after, and he left, disappearing from our lives. No one knew where he was, or what he was. A year had passed, and he came home. He sounded good, kind of like how he was before. He's trying to make up for what he had done, but to me, Nothing he does makes a difference anymore. Kinda like how he was before. He's trying to make up for what he had done. But to me, 
Nothing he does makes a difference anymore. I'm still in the dark. That's something I'm gonna have to live with my whole life. I can't change that. What do you think I should do? Our feelings are always hard to control. We are humans, after all. Sometimes we do things we can't explain, just because we feel that way. I had a student named Daniel, a sweet and innocent child. I was prepared to do anything for him, but don't judge me just yet. First, let me tell you my story. My name is Jolene. I'm a 21-year-old math teacher at a primary school. I live with my sister and my mother. My house was next to the school where I work. I love teaching, and I like teaching the students in creative ways. They loved me, and I loved them. Daniel was a special student, though. Our story began at the start of the new year. It was the first day of school. I missed all my students over the summer break. I missed them so much that I stood by the door to welcome them back. Before I started my first lesson, Mr. Smith, the student affairs officer, knocked on the class door, with Daniel hiding behind his back. Mr. Smith greeted the class and asked them to greet Daniel, but Daniel was too shy and didn't move. So I went over to him to take him by the hand, but he pulled his hand away, which embarrassed Mr. Smith. I asked him to greet his classmates, so he went and he stood in front of the class and he said, Hello, I am Daniel. Then he went and he sat at the very back of the class. He didn't talk much with the other kids. He didn't like to interact with anyone. Daniel always looked sad, and I thought to myself, he's only eight. What could possibly have made him that way? I tried to get close to him, but he resisted all my efforts. Sometimes he looked like he was hiding some big secret. And later on, I learned what it was. One night, when I was surfing the social media, I came across a horrible news story about a jealous husband killing his wife and another man right in front of his son. The child had been none other than my new student, Daniel. Reading that sad story, I started understanding why Daniel was acting that way. I decided to try brightening his life a little. Every day, I would buy a small present and put it on his desk. At first, it had no effect, but slowly he came to love that. During break time, I would sit beside him and we would share food together. I would get him involved in class activities. On his birthday, I arranged a surprise party with his class, his grandmother, and myself. He was so happy that day. After the party, he hugged me and he told me that he loved me. I hugged him tightly. He was not just a student to me. I treated him like he was my own son. He told me that he wanted to call me mother, and that made me so happy. After his grandmother died, he came to live with me. We faced a lot of problems together, but I followed his success in life with pride. Daniel is all grown up now. He's graduating from the Faculty of Engineering. I am so proud of what he has made of himself. I have been cursed, and it will haunt me for the rest of my life. It all began with a joke at first, but some jokes have serious consequences, and when this happens, your life becomes an uphill struggle. My name is Catherine. I am 16 years old, and I live with my parents and my little sister Mara. I like music acting, and watching action movies. I play baseball and practice ballet. I've even won a lot of prizes. I just had one problem. I like to make fun of people. It's like an addiction. I never watched what I said, nor did I care who it hurt. The kids I picked on were actually kind and gentle, but that just encouraged me even more. My friends were exactly like me. In fact, I was their leader. We walked like we owned the school. We had a classmate named Norman. He wasn't exactly what you'd call in good shape. He was quite the opposite of fit. During class breaks, my gang and I would steal his lunchbox and throw it around each other, keeping it away from him. We watched him run trying to catch us, but he'd stop halfway. The extra weight didn't help him, and he'd quickly run out of breath. Whenever he entered the classroom, we would surprise him by throwing old, musty vegetables and fruits at him. Norman tolerated our teasing. He didn't seem to mind much, but then, one day, a joke went a bit too far. We conceived an evil plan. We told him that there was going to be a photo contest, and the person who makes the funniest pose wins. Norman was so gullible that he believed us. He actually gave it some thought, then he posed for us. We did our best not to burst out laughing while we took pictures for him. The next day, when he came to school, Norman discovered that his photo shoot pictures had been posted all over the classroom walls, and the kids were laughing, writing comments all over the place. Norman was mortified, 
and he looked around at his classmates' faces. They were all laughing and pointing at him. Norman started crying, and his nose started bleeding. Then he fainted. A teacher had to call an ambulance to take him to the hospital. I certainly didn't expect that to happen. We knew that Norman would get so fatigued sometimes and leave school for the rest of the day, but we didn't know that he had a medical condition, and I felt deep regret. The curse that I spoke of earlier began when a girl named Naomi joined our class as a new student. On her first day, our teacher brought her in and introduced her to us. She sat at the desk at the very last row. I noticed that she was always looking at me in a strange way, and I wondered why. She looked at me with disdain, and I couldn't figure out why. It was my first time meeting her, after all. I avoided her, mainly because her looks made me feel uneasy, and whenever my gang wanted to make fun of her, I told them to leave her alone. I felt there was something about this girl. One day, during science class, the teacher had paired us up to do a lab experiment, and I intended to ask her about the way she looked at me. But before I could say anything, she took the initiative and surprised me by broaching the subject herself. You will pay for what you did to Norman, she said coldly. I looked at her and asked, How do you know Norman? And what are you talking about? She replied, It doesn't matter how I know. I just do. I spent the next few days thinking about her words. Afterwards, Naomi ignored me completely. No more staring, no more accusing looks. It was as if I no longer existed to her. I didn't understand her. Then came the day. We had a basketball match. It was the championship game, but I was still busy thinking about Naomi's words. During the game, I glanced at Naomi and caught her looking at me, which distracted me. One of the players from the other team suddenly bumped into me, knocking me down and causing me to land badly on one of my knees, the pain I was in. I had to withdraw from the game to be taken to the hospital. At the hospital, the doctor said that I had torn a ligament from my knee and told me that I would need a surgery and a lot of medication. So after going through the surgery, I began taking my medications. It caused me to gain weight, even though I wasn't eating very much, just vegetables and fruits. I asked the doctor about my sudden weight gain, and he told me the medications I was taking were affecting my hormonal balance, which rarely happened, but in my case, it did. He said that I would either have to endure great pain or deal with the overweight because it wasn't going to stop. So there you have it, guys. This is the curse that Naomi cast upon me, the price I had to pay for what I did to Norman. Eventually, I got well enough to take my final exams. When I arrived at school, all my friends took one look at me and started laughing. I was now their target, their prey. One of them said, You're as large as an elephant. I'll lose weight once I stop taking my medications, I retorted, but no one was listening. I am now living in a nightmare, and I would like to tell Norman that I'm very, very sorry for everything that I've done.